All right, guys, I watched the first six episodes of Pokemon Horizons, and with Pokemon Day and the premiere of Pokemon Horizons in North America right around the corner, I thought I'd make a little video covering the first six episodes. Pokemon Horizons is the first mainline anime we've gotten in over 20 years, and the first to not feature Ash Ketchum as the main protagonist. As much as he will be missed, this is a step in a new direction, and it's a huge fresher breath there, and it really hits the ground running. Pikachu, on the other hand, you just can't get rid of this guy. He's like a cockroach or something, you know? Though Pikachu playing the captain roles is kind of neat, to be honest. You know, let's just get right into it before I start spoiling stuff. So, spoiler warning ahead. If you plan on watching the series yourself, go check it out before watching this. I highly recommend it. Our story begins on Route 22, where we meet our new protagonist, Liko, as she makes her way to her new school in Kanto. Well, we actually start off with this beautifully animated sequence, showing off all these different Pokemon in different environments. It's a great way to start things off. She waves to some girl who was waving at her, but it turns out she was waving at someone else behind her. Relatable, honestly. This is to show off that she's more of a shy, awkward girl in a new place that she's not quite used to yet. But that's all about the change. Kinda, I guess. I don't know, probably. She meets her new bunkmate, Anne, who I really like the character design for. Spoiler alert though, she's mostly gone after this episode, but hopefully she comes back in the future. The first class begins, and they wait for their partner Pokemon. It's kind of a cool concept, all the partner Pokemon are starters, so this is kind of like how they get theirs, like just like in the games, you know? Aliko gets Sprigatito, and I'm pumped about that, because Meowskarata is probably my favorite Paldean starter, so it'll be cool to see it in action. Anne gets Oshawa, which makes me even more sad that she doesn't come along for the adventure, but oh well. Liko and Sprigatito realize they aren't very compatible yet, so they go out at night to, to get some training in together, and that's nice. Then later in her dorm room, Liko reveals a very special pendant her grandmother gave to her. Why was it special? Well, we don't know yet, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. The next day, a girl with pink hair and a girl with orange tips are on campus looking for Liko, while Liko is none the wiser, looking around for where Sprigatito could be napping. After finding Sprigatito, we cut to nighttime where Liko and Sprigatito were training some more by the water. After they kind of fail at that, we again cut to a man with black and white hair and purple eyes looking mischievously at the school. School's out on break and everyone's packing up to go homes for the holiday, but Liko was going to be staying around the dorm. This mysterious man starts asking around for Liko right as she walks in the door at the same time. He tells her he's here to pick her up for her grandmother, but she's onto him right away and flees with her pendant out the window when she goes to pack. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention he told her to bring the pendant too? Yeah, I don't know. She tries to flee but runs into a woman with stupid hair and a man with uh, alright hair. The guy with alright hair sends out Rhyhorn and it doesn't look good. But then Sprigatito uses leafage to block the Rhyhorn's eyes so they can escape. Ah, it's clever. They escape to the roof but are followed by the purple-eyed man. But just as it looks like there's nowhere to turn, a dark brown looking mofo shows up riding a Charizard to save the day. They both want Liko so they start battling and damn, Cerulege looks so good here. The animation is so nice here I gotta say, like this whole battle is just really cool looking. I still hate that they have to call out every move, but it's something I can live with. Liko's freaking out and decides it's about time to get the heck out of there, so she tries sneaking away, but as she finally takes a leap, a stray Psycho Cutter lashes out at her, but a light glows from her amulet, and the episode ends showing a force field protecting Liko and Sprigatito. The first episode starts off great. I haven't watched a Pokemon anime since Johto, but I really enjoyed that the stakes already seemed so high in the first episode, as opposed to the first episode of the original anime where it was just, you know, it's kind of boring, which I, I, which I get, but you know. Right off the bat, we see full evolutions and a nice looking battle. It's, it's really awesome. I'm just, I'm, I'm hyped for what's to come already. Episode 2 starts right where we left off, inside the force field thing Liko's amulet created, and inside we see Terrapagos. This released in Japan well before the Indigo Disc DLC even launched, so that's pretty cool honestly. It pops up and it's all like, hey yo, you're the man now dog, and pieces out. As she's falling from the sky, she's scooped up by the crazy man in his Charizard, and he's all like, hey yo, gotta go, and they fly off. 
but these ain't no Team Rocket slouches. So they make chase on Skarmory's and a Corviknight. Like, you know, Steel type, because they're so bad, you know? They're so bad. Liko realizes, hey, yo, Stranger Danger, what the heck? And asks the man, like, yo, what's going on here? But before he can answer, they arrive at this badass airship. And man, if Super Mario or Final Fantasy taught me anything, it's that airships are dope. They arrive on the ship and meet the others, and we find out that the crazy man is freed. But before we can learn much else, the big bad, the bone. bad guys show up. So they do the most logical thing and fly the airship right into a storm. That'll show them. We learn that our big baddies are called the Explorers, and hopefully not the Dora kind, or I don't think they'd be that scary. Freed goes and meets the captain, but it's revealed with some big epic music that it's just Pikachu. Pika. Right when you thought we finally escaped him. But hey, it's kind of cool. A and at least iconic EQ Otani gets to reprise the role again. They full steam it ahead into the storm, but, but before they get too far, the explorers break onto the ship. They surround Liko and like a coward, relatable, she offers to give herself up. As they're leaving, Freed flies in to save the day yet again, stating they are the rising bolt tacklers, which I think is somehow badass, but also cheesy at the same time. I love it. Pikachu joins the fray and the battle between the purple eyes, Ceruledge, and Captain Pikachu begins. And man is it cool. Pikachu is just badass as hell here charging himself up and volt tackling the Saru ledge. Liko begs them to stop, but then Sprigatito jumps off her all angrily and is like, hey yo, what the fuck girl, I want the smoke, let's go. So Liko is all like, I bet, and they use leafage on the purple eyed man, shrouding the entire area in glowing leaves. They celebrate, but too early I guess, because Sprigatito slides right off of the ship into the bad guy's arms, and we end the episode on that cliffhanger. The way they did the cliffhanger was a little silly, but a good episode nonetheless. A little dialogue heavy, but with it even being that way, we still don't really even find out much about the Volt Tacklers or the Pendant, but oh well, we're world building out here. The third episode begins the next day with Liko waking up and wanting to go find Sprigatito, and we learn the names of all the Volt Tacklers right away. Orla, Ludlow, Molly, and Murdoch, and we find out that they're gonna help Liko find Sprigatito. They come to the town where they're holding Sprigatito, and they give Rockruff the scent to track it down. Typing and saying Sprigatito this many times is killing me, I'm not going to lie. They all go their separate ways, while one of the bad guys plants a tracker of some sort on the Voltacular's ship. I just want to point out, we see this person in a Nidoran costume almost every episode, and they're giving some sort of tips or guides on being a Pokemon trainer, and it's kind of silly. I like how the costume is just so ridiculously baggy and just has this giant zipper on the front. But I feel like it's going to be important later, but for now it's kind of just explaining things for possible newcomers, which is nice. We cut to the explorer girl with the dumb hair and learn that she's taking a liking to Sprigatito and it's at least getting taken care of, which is nice. Then we cut again to the outside of the Pokemon Center where Liko is picking up supplies and this Chansey is helping out, but Liko hears Rockruff and just leaves and just leaves the Chansey to hold it all. It's kind of funny. They track down the explorers to the warehouse they're holding Sprigatito at and form a plan. Free takes on the purple boys head to head while Liko grabs Sprigatito and makes a run for it. They run into stupid hair girl and Sprigatito rejects her harder than all the girls reject me and she angrily sends out her Skarmory to attack but Liko and Sprigatito use leafage to once again flee the scene as does Freed as he hops on Charizard and flies away as well. We cut back to on the ship where Liko reflects on everything that happened and tells the Volt Tacklers Ayo this shit right here I want in and Freed's all like yeah you, you were coming anyways because we want to know about the pendant. And he also reveals that they discovered the mysteries of Pokemon. And with that, the third episode ends. They didn't really explain too much, but still a fun little episode nonetheless. You know, we're just out here moving along that plot. Our next episode starts with the airship losing altitude. Seems like it took too much damage, so they have to make an emergency stop at a nearby island for an emergency repair. 
but sadly they don't have the materials required. But of course, in true plot armor fashion, Freed knows one of the island locals and leaves to go ask for some supplies. Fue Coco, I haven't really mentioned him yet, but he's there. My bad. And he sees Charizard and Freed fly away without him, so he stumbles and falls off the ship chasing them. He's honestly adorable, and I love his animation, but God, is his, vo it, his voice is just awful. It's supposed to be, like, goofy, and I get that, but it's just kind of annoying to me. Just, wah, wah, wah. I, I, oh, God. But I can deal with it. We meet a boy with a hat and red hair named Roy, who seems the airship and gets excited. He lives on an island surrounded by Pokemon and learns about Pokemon from school every day but still hasn't had one of his own. I like Roy. He seems like he'll be a pretty good character. Liko realizes Fuecoco is missing, which leads her to where he fell off. She notices the skid marks and realizes what happened, and she immediately goes down to the ground to start searching. Fuecoco finds Roy's clubhouse and steals all his food and then goes to sing by a tree. Roy arrives shortly after and sees all his snacks got ate, so he goes up to the lookout and notices something singing by the tree. He goes and meets Fue Coco, a Pokemon he's never seen before. He tells Fue Coco he loves his singing, but Fue Coco is like, hey yo, what the heck? And runs out of there with a case of certified stage fright. He catches up to Fue Coco, but spots the airship and is like, oh my god. We cut to Freed at the island village talking to the local who seems to be kind of like a grump. He tells Freed he's not helping him again and, re and he reveals that Freed is actually a Pokemon professor. Interesting. Might be the coolest Pokemon professor we've seen so far. We then again cut to Roy and Fue Coco getting along just great. It's adorable. We then cut to Liko and Sprigatito searching through the forest only to start getting chased by all the local Pokemon. Scyther and Caterpie included. God, I love bug Pokemon. They run into Roy and Fue Coco in a tree who saves them from the angry Pokemon. They get to talking about the airship and introduce themselves. He shows off this fancy treasure Pokeball, but he says that they could never get it open, so that he doesn't know if there's anything inside. He reveals like he wants to be like one of the trainers of old that would fight legendary Pokemon, and I don't blame him. Sounds like he'll fit right in. But then all of a sudden, the local Pokemon find and corner our friendly protagonist and wrap them up in a nice string shot. It's revealed that Fue Coco ate all their food and that's why they're mad. And he makes this silliest sound that almost makes me take back what I said before about it being annoying. Freed once again comes in to save the day and the animation of the local Pokemon freaking out is low-key hilarious. Knowing they can't hurt the Pokemon, Freed instead does his best acrobatics routine and feeds them all berries to calm them down. They all talked, yada yada yada, they pick berries for the Pokemon, yada yada yada, then Freed, Liko, and the Pokemon fly off, leaving Roy behind and all sad. Aww. Then we end the episode with this butler guy with the worst comb over I've ever seen talking to Purple Eyes about some master we haven't seen yet and how Purple Eyes has everything under control. I guess his, th his name is Amatheos? I don't know. But yeah, that's it. They go off in their submarine to bother our protagonist once more. Good episode. Freed and Roy gotta be my favorite so far, so I really hope Roy joins the team. He does. Our next episode begins with Roy sneaking onto the airship to see Fue Coco until he gets absolutely demolished by Captain Pikachu. Everyone comes up to see what all the commotion is, but he says he just wants to see Fue Coco. He wants Fue Coco to be his partner Pokemon, so they let Roy stay with Fue Coco to see how compatible they really are. In the morning, Roy, Freed, and Liko leave to go try to get help with the ship from Roy's grandfather, but when they arrive, Freed realizes it's the same house of the local from before. Embarrassing! <laughs> Fue Coco realizes they left and follows behind. We cut to Freed talking to Roy's grandfather again about help with the ship when Freed realizes the bug Pokemon can help. See, bug Pokemon are just, just the best. They stay for lunch while Fue Coco continues to search around for the others. He trips and he gets so sad. Aw oh, man. 
but then he notices the explorer's submarine in the distance. The explorers shortly find out where the ship is and decide to split up. Purple Eyes goes for the pendant while the others go for the airship, while at the same time Fue Coco runs off to warn them. But somehow Fue Coco made it back before him. I, I don't know how. And then all of a sudden they're on the beach when, and a battle ensues. I, I don't know. While Liko and Roy rally up all the local Pokemon to help fight. The stupid hair girl shows up, but then they beat her off screen and it's just kind of a nothing moment. While Roy shows up to the beach with the local Pokemon to help. The local Pokemon run onto the ship and fix it right up while the battle continues on the beach. And this is where I'm a little salty. Somehow Fue Coco really, like, literally couldn't Ember, but then all of a sudden just beats Rhyhorn. You know, a rock ground Pokemon, a counter to fire, in one hit. A nice way to end the episode, I guess, but kind of dumb. The episode ends with Purple Eyes going in for an, an attack on Liko in another cliffhanger. My favorite. We go right into the next episode where Liko's pendant once again saves the day, but then shortly after Cerulege just dummies them anyways. That is, until the pendant lights up again, but this time so does Roy's ancient Pokeball. Then BAM! All of a sudden, goddamn shiny Rayquaza comes out of it and it's all like, oh shit, what's up? This is so cool! This mofo just starts a meteor shower and the explorers are like, hell no, let's get the hell out of here. Roy asks Rayquaza to get back in the ball, but of course he's not gonna listen. It takes one look at Liko and her pendant and pieces the hell out of there. Maybe her grandmother had something to do with Rayquaza, I don't know, it's just a theory. A game theory. So, sorry, okay I'll stop. I guess we'll find out later. We cut to Rockruff as he's trying to become a slow bro, and some sappy dialogue. And then we cut to the beach where Roy is a, officially catches Fue Coco, and with permission from his grandpa, he joins the team. Let's go! We end the episode with a closer look at one of the explorers and hear the mysterious voice of the master. This other explorer is given the task of getting the pendant now, while Purple Eyes is taken off duty, but he isn't very happy about it. But now he has a new target. The Black Rayquaza. Dun dun dun. We cut back to the rising Voltaclers as Roy officially joins the team and they take off from the island with plenty of adventures in store. Next stop, Paldea. And that's it. That's the first six episodes. I gotta say, I really like it so far. As I said, the stakes are higher, we get badass battles early, and legendary Pokemon also so early on, and it's, it's just like a big mystery to uncover, it's, it's, it's cool. I also really like the characters so far, and I'm excited to see more about these villains. Yeah. There's already 76 episodes out in Japan, but only 46 episodes English dubbed so far. So it's honestly keeping pretty close in line with the sub to dub ratio, which is good for all you dubbers out there. I prefer sub in general, but do appreciate dub for multitasking, because I do that a lot. I even heard rumors of a movie coming out soon, with Petra Runt being the big part of it. But who knows if that was true or not. All I know is I'm definitely going to be keeping up with this series. If you made it this far, maybe drop a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And let me know what you think about Pokemon Horizons in the comments down below. But try not to spoil anything. See you nerds later. Ka-chow!